Welcome back to Plug Live Television. Apologies, there haven't been many episodes recently. I've been incredibly busy, including filming a series of electric vehicle reviews for the Faster Project, which is installing 73 much-needed new rapid chargers across rural Scotland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So, as part of that, they're doing a series of electric vehicle reviews that we filmed with Generate Media. It's basically Plug Life Television with a budget, and it's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks to the team at Rick and Generate Media for their amazing work on that. Definitely go check it out on their channel. Link is below. But back to today, back to Plug Life Television. A question that keeps coming up in various forums for EV drivers is, why is my electric car not charging as quickly as I'd expect it to on this rapid charger or this high power charger? So. There's people who've gone to, for example, a 150 kilowatt charger with a car that claims it can do at least 150 kilowatts on CCS, but they're getting nowhere near that. Or maybe you're at a 50 kilowatt rapid charger, which should charge just about any EV at 50 kilowatts, but yours is only pulling about 25 or so. There's various different reasons why this might be the case, and today's episode is going to go into those reasons why. If your EV isn't getting full power from a rapid charger, there are several possible reasons why, some of which are to do with the charger, and some of which are to do with the vehicle. The most likely reasons vary depending on whether you're using a 50 kilowatt rapid charger or a high power charger, which typically provides a charge power of over 100 kilowatts. Let's start with 50 kilowatt rapid chargers first. Most, but not all, modern EVs can charge at at least 50 kilowatts, with some of the notable exceptions including the Honda e and the Mazda MX-30. So when you plug into a 50 kilowatt rapid charger, it's reasonable to expect a charge power of close to 50 kilowatts. However, if the charge power is substantially less than this, say 25 kilowatts, then there are one of several possible reasons why. First, if it's a very cold day and your EV has only been driven a short distance to the charger after being parked up for several hours, the battery might be cold, and it will need to heat up before it can take on a higher charging power. See episode 8 of Plug Life Television for an explanation of how cold temperatures affect the battery. Note that your vehicle may have a battery preheating function that heats up the battery if a rapid charger is put into the sat-nav as the destination. This will allow the battery to increase its charging power and reduce charging time. The opposite may be the case if you have a 40 kilowatt hour Nissan LEAF. Since it doesn't have a battery cooling system, if it's been driven a long distance today with multiple rapid charges, then the battery may be so hot that it has to throttle its charging power until it cools down. This is an important lesson on the value of a liquid-based battery cooling system, as found in almost all other EVs. Alternatively, the battery may be at a high state of charge, or SOC. As the battery charges, its cell voltages increase towards their maximum allowable voltage, and when a high SOC is reached, the charge power has to be reduced to avoid the cells going over their maximum voltage. This is normal behaviour. What's not normal behaviour is if a charger consistently gives out lower than expected power to many different EVs at many different SOC. This may be down to their power modules, which convert alternating current electricity from the grid to direct current electricity that's used to charge your vehicle's battery. Many rapid chargers have two or more power modules that make up their maximum charge power. It could be that one or more of its power modules has failed, thus preventing the charger from delivering its full power. Phone the charging network's helpline to report the issue so that they can send an engineer to investigate and fix it. Now, let's have a look at high power chargers, or HPCs, which typically have a charge power of greater than 100 kilowatts. One example of many in this field is the Circontrol Raptune 150, which is a 150 kilowatt HPC. Some EV drivers have reported that these chargers don't deliver anywhere near their advertised maximum charge power to their vehicle despite their vehicle having a maximum charge power of 150 kilowatts or more. So why are these vehicles charging slower than expected? There are four main reasons why HPC charging power may be limited. These are the vehicle's battery voltage, the HPC's maximum current that it can supply to your vehicle via the CHAdeMO or CCS cable, the vehicle's design, including factors like the maximum charge current that the car can accept, and certain conditions imposed by its battery management system, or BMS, and splitting power between two cars that are charging on the same HPC simultaneously. Let's take a closer look at the first two points, battery voltage and maximum HPC cable current. The power delivered to a vehicle during charging is equal to the current supplied to the car multiplied by the car battery's voltage. Both the maximum voltage and the maximum current are limited by either the vehicle or the charger. 
For example, if the charger has a lower maximum charge current than the vehicle, then the charger shall define the maximum charge current delivered, and vice versa. Take for example a Tesla Model 3, which can draw up to 300 kilowatts on the latest Tesla superchargers, but has a maximum battery voltage of 400 volts. You might think that this means that you'd get 150 kilowatts on a Raption 150, but if you look at the tech specs in the small print on the side of the charger, you'll see that it has a maximum CCS cable current of 250 amps. This means that if a Model 3 plugs into a Raption 150 HPC with its maximum current supply of 250 amps via the CCS plug, the maximum achievable charging power is 250 amps multiplied by the 400 volts of the Model 3's battery, which is 100 kilowatts, or two thirds of the maximum rated power of the HPC. Similarly, the BYD and ChargePoint HPCs used by Instavolt, which claim to provide up to 120 kilowatts, have a maximum cable current of 200 amps. Since most EVs today have 400 volt battery packs, this means that most EVs shall get no more than 80 kilowatts of power from these chargers, with only EVs with higher voltage battery packs, like the 800 volt battery packs found in the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, and Porsche Taycan, being able to achieve 120 kilowatts. Speaking of the Ioniq 5, which has an 800 volt battery pack and a maximum charge power of around 225 kilowatts, if one was to plug into a Circ Control Raption 150, the maximum achievable charging power in theory would be 250 amps multiplied by 800 volts, which is 200 kilowatts. But this exceeds the grid supply to the HPC, which is designed to be installed with a 163 kilowatts, well, KVA, but I won't confuse you too much at this stage, AC grid connection. Since the charger itself is 94% efficient, this translates to its headline maximum charge power of 150 kilowatts, which the Ionic 5 will draw in full. The next HPC charge power limitation that we will consider is the design of the car. Prior to 2019, the vast majority of non-Tesla EVs were only capable of a maximum charge power of 50 kilowatts. For example, the 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf has a maximum battery voltage of 400 volts and a maximum DC rapid charging current of about 125 amps, which equates to a total maximum charge power of 50 kilowatts. Thermal management of the battery pack by the car's battery management system, or BMS, can also result in reduced charging speeds. Most modern electric vehicles have active thermal management, that is, air or liquid-based temperature control that allows full power to be sustained for longer. But the LEAF doesn't have active thermal management. So, if its battery gets too hot, the BMS has to throttle back the maximum charge power to prevent it from overheating. Similarly, if the battery is too cold, the charging power must be reduced. See episode 8 of Plug Life Television for more information on how cold weather affects batteries and charging. It's worth noting that even if your EV has an advanced thermal management system, if you've left it parked outside on a freezing cold night and then driven a short distance of a couple of miles to a nearby HPC, it will take the battery a little while to warm up before you start to see the maximum charge power being drawn. Finally, some EVs have additional degradation protection built into their BMS that deliberately limits the maximum charge power. For example, some older, high mileage Tesla Model S that have been supercharged continuously have had their maximum charge power limited by Tesla, who've erred on the side of caution to preserve the lifespan of the cells. This shouldn't affect the latest models with increasingly robust cell chemistry and better design thermal management systems. A final reason why full charge power may not be drawn from an HPC is that the HPC's power is being split between two vehicles. The Raption 150 is able to supply power to vehicles charging via CHAdeMO and CCS. Take for example a Hyundai Ioniq 5 charging on CCS at the maximum allowable 150 kilowatts. when a 40 kilowatt hour Nissan LEAF comes along and plugs into the CHAdeMO side of the HPC. We know from earlier that the LEAF has a battery voltage of 400 volts and a maximum charge current of 125 amps which limits it to the maximum charge power of 50 kilowatts. The HPC cannot exceed its own maximum charge power, and it also cannot exceed the maximum current that it can supply down its CCS and CHAdeMO cables respectively. So, it splits its available power between the two EVs. In common with many other makes and models of HPC that can charge two vehicles at once, the Raption 150 splits its power modules 50-50 between the two vehicles, even if one needs much more power than the other and even if this results in the charger's maximum power not being fully utilised, even although the maximum charge power of the two vehicles comfortably exceeds that of the charger. Ironically, one vehicle charging on its own may be able to take on more charge power than two vehicles charging simultaneously. In this scenario, 
The Ionic 5 can make full use of its allocated 75 kilowatts of power modules, but the Leaf maxes out at 50 kilowatts, resulting in a 25 kilowatt surplus of power that, in theory, the Ionic 5 could definitely use, but cannot because of the design of the charger. Some other HPCs are much smarter about how they split their power, and manage to minimise any frustrating surplus of power like this so that everyone gets as fast a charge as possible. See episode 32 of Plug Life Television for more information. Tesla's latest generation of superchargers is one example that manages to allocate power in a smarter manner to EVs, but older V2 superchargers are grouped in pairs and share power modules between them, splitting their power modules when both superchargers are in use. This has led to the adoption amongst Tesla drivers of so-called urinal etiquette. You don't want to be that guy. So, whilst an HPC is capable of stuffing hundreds of kilowatts of power into a car, the car itself must be capable of receiving that amount of power. EVs with more conventional 400 volt battery packs may find that the maximum charging power that they can draw from an HPC is limited by voltage and or current, with the culprits most likely being a combination of the car's battery voltage and the HPC's maximum cable current. If you have an older EV with a 50 kilowatt maximum charge speed, an HPC won't provide you with a power boost over a conventional rapid charger, although you could still use an HPC if no rapid chargers are available. If a 50 kW rapid charger consistently delivers noticeably less than 50 kW to just about any EV charging on Chadamo or CCS, then it may have a faulty power module, or modules, that need to be repaired or replaced. Faulty power modules can be found on HPCs too, but lower than expected charge speeds on HPCs are more likely to be down to the battery voltage as described above. Finally, if your vehicle's battery is overheating, which is unlikely as modern EVs tend to have good thermal management systems, with the exception of the 40 kWh Nissan LEAF, or if your vehicle's battery is cold, having only been driven a short distance after being left outside in freezing temperatures, you can expect reduced charging power on a conventional rapid charger, let alone an HPC, until the battery reaches its optimum temperature to accept more power. So there you have it, if your car is not charging as quick as you'd expect it to on a rapid charger or a high power charger, there's a very good chance that one of those aforementioned reasons is the reason why. And if you like what you see, don't forget Plug Life Television isn't a paid for YouTube channel, it's very much my kind of spare time side project whenever I get a minute to try and put episodes together, which as you can see time has been a bit sparse recently. But if you like it, do head to Plug Life Merch, my humble little online shop, where you'll find Plug Life Television branded goodies. I've put the link below this video for you to check out. So, see you again soon, hopefully sooner than last time, for another episode of Plug Life Television.